Welcome to Tuesday Steps from So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today let's do a whip stitch. A whip stitch is great for English paper piecing, invisible applique and edging, closing a seam. It's very strong, it's smooth, and it's almost invisible from the right side. Match up your fabric so the good sides are touching and the wrong sides are on the outside. And it's easy if you pin them together so you don't have to fight with keeping them nice and straight. I'm going to be stitching in a straight motion, but the seams are going to appear that they're on an angle. I like to stitch from the direction away from me coming into me. So the first thing I'm going to do is bury my knot in between the seam allowances. So if you can get that needle in between the seam allowances, that knot's going to be buried. And the tail of that knot's just going to stay inside so we don't have to worry about it coming to the surface. From there, I'm going to come away from me, going towards me. It's going to be in a very straight motion. I will be stabbing both layers of fabric, only picking up about two threads on each of those pieces of fabric at a time. And then just pull it towards you. From there you're going to take it and you're going to go back in the same direction so you're making a loop and pull it. You don't want to go too tight so you don't want to dimple the fabric. The next stitch I'm going to do in the same motion away from me coming towards me. A couple of threads on each edge and pull. You're just going to continue that looping method going in a straight row. Picking up a couple of threads each time. And even though you're stitching straight, those threads are on an angle. Continue that through the whole seam. If you're holding the fabric so that it's straight towards your body, you can go from one side to another. Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to go from the right to the left. If you're left-handed, you'll go from the left to the right. It's the same motion as having it flat as on an angle. Stab a couple of threads on each edge and pull the thread. If you stab more than two threads at a time, you're going to see more of the seam allowance on the other side. I'll do half with a small stitch and the rest with a larger stitch. And you'll see the difference when it's opened up flat. Here are the tiny little stitches that we've just picked up two threads at a time. And this is a larger stitch where we've picked up four or five threads at a time. If you're doing a pillow closing and you're not going to be able to return this to the right side, this stitch will work really great. As long as you're using a thread that matches, it's going to blend right in. When we open up the fabric, the seams are going to lay flat. So the seams are not laying over top of each other. They're just joined together in the center. The large stitch and the small stitch. And from the right side, you have the tiny little stitches just barely peeking out. And the larger ones, you will see more of the stitches. But the fabrics are just touching each other. They're not overlapping. And when you use matching thread, these small stitches will disappear right inside the fabric. And that's all there is to a whip stitch. It's one of the most popular hand stitches because it's quick easy, and it's a very strong, invisible seam. Thank you for joining me today on Tuesday's Tips. Feel free to subscribe, and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.